Hello everyone, today we're going to be going over a new video, uh, this is called the health benefits of a raw food diet. Uh, it's basically this uh, absolute troll who claims that eating raw food is good for you, which actually isn't, and uh, if you want to go ahead and kill yourself, go right ahead um, and eat raw food and see what happens and see what kind of pathogens you get infected with. But anyways, this guy is just an absolute fool, an absolute fraud. Uh, please do not listen to these kinds of people. It's going to be a little bit of an older video, um, but it is nonetheless still very relevant nowadays with all the goobers we see trying to peddle this kind of nonsense, uh, as well as all the con men, uh, naturally. But anyways, let's just get right in and see what this guy has to say. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Hi, my name is Nicole Pyle, and you're watching Our Ventura TV. Today, my guest is Roger Bazanis, author of The Ancient Raw Food Diet. Hi, Roger. Hello there, Nicole. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. So you're an expert on raw food, correct? In fact, I started the raw, whole raw food diet no concept and movement. Wow. Yeah. Now, when was this? Oh, gee whiz. Just <laughs> after I came out with the book, The Ancient Raw Food Diet, uh, what happened was I didn't intend to have uh, the kind of impact on food as, as I did. Uh, but what happened in my other books, I kept mentioning raw foods. Mm -hmm. And people wanted to know more about this information. And I was afraid to tell them, figuring they'd think I was nuts. Well, now I'm not worried. I know they know I'm nuts. Uh, <laughs> so the uh, Ancient Raw Food Diet answered all the questions that wanted to be or needed to be answered, such as what is an enzyme, mm -hmm. what food is, what it's not. Is there an importance to when we eat based on what the body's doing? What is the body actually doing? So it's, uh, it's rather amazing what whole raw foods do to the human body and what the other stuff is doing. Ah, I see. So what would make raw food raw? Now there's a great, great question. So the defining aspect of raw foods are enzymes. And enzymes are nothing but protein molecules. So anyone saying, I have to get my protein. All right, I'm gonna stop him right here. This is the first kind of uh, tidbit of bull crap he's trying to spew here that all enzymes are proteins. This is absolutely false. Um, enzymes can uh, be anything that does um, that is in a in an endogenous biological system that uh, is able to perform work. Is I will either able to do anabolic processes, which is building up molecules, or catabolic, which is breaking them down. Uh, good examples are ribozyme. This is an RNA composed uh, uh, enzyme which is found in um, uh, ribosomes. But anyways, this guy uh, obviously doesn't know what he's talking about, but nonetheless, let's just continue. Protein, gotta eat a lot of meat and this and that. Oh, you have a tangerine? No, 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 no fruit, no, 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 no protein in fruit, that's false. Hmm. There's trace elements or trace amounts of protein in everything we eat because- um, Also, uh, absolutely false. Trace elements are uh, elements that are found in extremely low concentrations in the human body. Uh, for example, uh, um, iodine or selenium. Um, so obviously he's demonstrating that he doesn't know what he's talking about. Um, yeah, but uh, another thing, uh, uh, protein is not an element. It's a chemical compound, so I don't know what he's really talking about here. Um, if he even knows what he is, but he's probably not. But let's continue on. As enzymes... In six degrees, gone. Wow. Enzymes are destroyed. And that this is also uh, very much bullshit. Um, uh, no, not every enzyme decomposes at whatever internal, I think it's 106, he said, temperature. Um, sure, a lot of enzymes do denature at that temperature because it is very unstable. You get a lot, a lot of elastic kinetic energy breaking the bonds apart. But uh, this is absolutely bullcrap because PCR enzymes or DNA polymerase uh, does not do this. It actually does not decompose. Um, uh, until a very higher, t uh, very much higher temperature, um, uh, and there's a good reason for that because of the machinery and everything. It, it heats up uh, quite a bit, but uh, yeah, he doesn't know what he's talking about. Not every enzyme decomposes at that, that at that temperature, and it's clear he's demonstrating to us that he does not know his research. But let's just continue. Um, yeah. And it's across the board. In fact, 
not across you're the board. You're probably aware that uh, that you don't want your body to reach 106 degrees. Very true. Right? Start icing it like 103, 104, right? Yeah. Exact same reason. You will cook. Hmm. Enzymes are destroyed and suddenly pfft, body falls over. Or if body was laying down, it stops working. Mm -hmm. Here's something else. Freezing destroys enzymes. Mm. So when you walk down the frozen food aisle, oh, look at this, look at that. Oh, that's very nice. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm sure you don't really sound like that. But I would hope. No. When we do, we're seeing food that's dead because the enzymes or the molecules have expanded by 8%, 8 to 9%, mm -hmm. and that's killed the enzymes. Wow. So when you look at canned food, in fact, whenever you... I'm not really sure about the veracity of that statement. I'm pretty sure it's bullcrap. Um, there really is no alive when it comes to uh, food in the frozen aisle. I mean, everything is dead already. Enzymes, you know, have any sort of life force, if you will. Um, uh, they don't produce their own energy. Uh, they cannot reproduce without the, uh, the, the cell. So it's already dead. And I don't know what he's talking about here. Uh, it's completely, uh, completely irrelevant. You see the term raw? Mm -hmm. Nothing that's raw is ever labeled raw. For good reason, because it doesn't take uh, a rocket scientist to realize that something is raw and you need to freaking cook it. Interesting. No. So nothing cooked over 106 degrees, nothing frozen, nothing labeled raw. Right, that's true. So what can you eat? Well, there's quite a bit to eat actually after we get mm -hmm. over the, the shock that we're not going to eat crackers and cookies and cake and, mm -hmm. and cook this and that. So there's fruit and vegetables, whole raw fruit and vegetables for those meat eaters who want to do this. They can have fish, uh, they can have beef, and, and those who are brave, mm -hmm. they could perhaps eat other meats. Uh, I wouldn't do that, but that's what they can do. And Uncooked, there's, right? What? Uncooked, right? Uncooked, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what this guy is basically saying, well, first of all, this gets me fuming. He's saying that basically you can eat uh, 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 a beef, pork, fish, chicken, any kind of those meats. He, he basically broadens, broadens it to that uh, uncooked, which is absolutely you shouldn't do. Uh, again, doesn't take a rocket scientist to realize that that's going to kill you. It uh, doesn't take a doctor to realize that that's probably going to kill you. Uh, uncooked pork can give you teeny worms, which is tapeworms, and they are relent un uh, unrelentless or relentless uh, in uh, taking up all your vitamins. Uh, a fish have a ton of worms, a very huge chance you're going to get a bunch of ecto or endoparasites. Um, uh, with chicken, you can get salmonella, avian flu uh, from uncooked meats. Uh, and uh, beef, you can get like uh, toxoplasmosis, uh, uncooked, anything like that. Uh, uh, it's really not a good idea uh, and you know what what does kill them is uh, cooking your food so absolutely goes against the grain of what he's arguing here uh, but uh, if you really want to get those pathogens go right ahead and get a prion or something and yeah it's not a good idea now the funny thing about this is I haven't eaten any any meat of any type since let me think this over it's got to be about four or five months now and you can see that i'm wasting away <laughs> so as a raw food what some people would call a vegetarian i'm still 164 pounds mm -hmm. and i'm running at 13 percent body fat i'm not wearing away the gray i had a lot of it is gone i mean wow. it's amazing it's fascinating what happens with whole raw you food. can't really reverse that it's raw food it's wow. probably bull crap so what kind of raw foods would you recommend out of food and drinking it mm -hmm. that's good there's only one drawback with juicing that usually indicates more than one juice mm -hmm. well enzymes are combative hmm. they're there to release energy and no that's absolutely bullshit enzymes uh, not all enzymes are combative um Sure, if you think of like CRISPR Cas9 editing system, whatever the hell bacteria have ha uh, has to destroy phage DNA, um, uh, yeah, that's combative. But uh, all uh, some enzymes are used to build things, such as uh, um, like a pyruvate kinase or something, glycolysis, some something like that. 
Um, not all enzymes are combative. I don't know what the hell he's saying here, but this is absolutely the biggest bullshit I've ever heard of, of today and possibly this whole month. Um, it's it's kind of, yeah, it's it's not good. And they are, are full of energy. Well, when you put two competing... Enzymes are not full of energy, they use energy. I know you wouldn't do this, but two competing enzymes together, they do what bikers and, say, the police would do. They fight. They don't like each other. They they attack. So No, that's absolutely not true. An enzyme does not... Um, I mean, I serve sure subunits. Enzymes do not... Um, but in general, enzymes do not um, fight each other, in, in a sense. Unless you're thinking of the enzyme substrate complex, which they still don't fight each other. They interact with each other and uh, produce a new product, uh, either anabolic or catabolic. But I don't know what he's saying, once again. Um, but yeah, let's, let's continue. I don't know what he's on. So let's say we put uh, kale mm -hmm. and tomato and a banana and an apple and who knows whatever else in a blender and <laughs> blended it all up. Good idea. Tastes great. Mm -hmm. Problem was, within a few seconds, the enzymes have neutralized each other and we have a... Um, no, no, I don't know what he's saying again. Uh, I know I sound like ad nauseum right now. I don't know what he's saying, but it is really true. I'm sorry I don't have anything else to say, but this guy is absolutely uh, horse shitting uh, his way up to the top. Um, uh, no, enzymes do not neutralize each other. I don't know what he's saying, uh, once again. Uh, by neutralize, you're either saying like the charge neutralizes, or base neutralizes acid, or a whole host of other things. But no, enzymes do not neutralize each other. Um, that's absolutely uh, not true at all. And again, I don't know what his point is, uh, so complete meaningless. A tube full of tasty vitamins and minerals. Hmm. So the best that can be said for what we eat cooked, it's vitamins and minerals. Just like if this whole table... Uh, yeah, uh, actually, sure, vitamins and minerals and also amino acids, which you absolutely need. Uh, your body cannot synthesize all... Um, all the amino acids i think it's a little bit over 20 or it might be exactly 20 but um yeah he's uh spurting uh nonsense at this point and uh, not just vitamins and minerals uh the food that you have uh even though it might not have enzymes in it because you cooked it it doesn't really matter because your body has the means to produce the enzymes that it needs i'm not aware of any enzyme that your body gets uh, from another source and uh, and uh, my current understanding, it's all endogenous. So, yeah, meaningless again. Was full of cooked meat mm -hmm. and... That's what whole <clears throat> raw foods do. They literally, the body can stop hurting. Aches and pains go away. People who think they have arthritis. You're going to end up getting more aches and pains once you realize what you've eaten has a bunch of pathogens in it. But again, I digress. If you want to go ahead and get like meningitis or whatever the hell, I will give you those things. Uh, go ahead and uh, uh, try it. Uh, take a swig. You know what I'm saying? But uh, it doesn't really matter. Again, enzymes, it's not going to really do shit for you, for lack of a better word. It's You eat the enzymes, it goes in your stomach, it really doesn't do anything at all. Uh, it's so small, the amount of enzymes you eat from the food, is uh, it's not really going to do anything. Your body makes its own enzymes. Uh, it doesn't need to procure it from any other outside source. Uh, uh, end of story, period. Suddenly... My joints stopped hurting. That's weird. Well, wow. they've act yeah, they've activated their kidneys. They their skin changes, and on and on and on. It's just fascinating what whole raw foods do. Wow, that's amazing. Well, you know, it's also fascinating. Number one, uh, the bullshit that you're spreading, and number two, uh, how much damage it can do to your body by uh, infecting yourself with pathogens. It is so. Okay, so someone ha can have food that's good for them. They can be putting that in. But what if they've already put in things that are bad for them, like? toxins, various foods that aren't good for them. What can they do to handle that? Well, let's first touch on this point. If they're listening to the, um, to the uh, oh, FDA and American Med Medical Association and Big Pharma and, mm -hmm. and modern medicine, they think they're doomed because they're broken. They're done. It's over. You get a disease and yeah, it's never going to go away. 
And all disease means is dis-ease, lack of ease in the body. Mm -hmm. So when we uh, recognize that the body can rejuvenate itself... Mon we got society needs to get over this fad of like natural is good and natural can cure you and it's it's uh, i hate to break it to you but it's not all fairy tales of this uh kind of stuff uh man-made things can can um do things that can heal people miraculously and we also create things that, uh, things that can kill people um in parallel nature can create absolutely amazing things like we got aspirin um, from nature um, but I can also uh, make things that kill people, like bears, uh, think disease, pestilence, mosquitoes, all those nasty things. There are a lot of bad things on both ends, but man-made things are not all bad. You got to get over this fad or this this uh, this conspiracy mindset that everything out is is everything is out to get you. Then the government is lying to us. This is sure the government does bad things, but. Um, it's not all government, first of all. Big Pharma is based off of the science. Um, and we need to get over this fad of uh, man-made things are bad, because they absolutely aren't. They save lives. Uh, to say that is, uh, is an insult to people who have actually been cured by man-made medicine uh, in mainstream uh, uh, science-proven uh, medicine. And we can do it through the way we feed it, then we're not saddled by any one problem. The body's able to completely move itself in the right direction to heal. So uh, now, if you wouldn't do me, or if you would do me a favor and remind me what the actual question was that I just kind of moved away from. If somebody already has something bad for them in their body, some kind of toxin, how would they get rid of it? How this would they is called embarrassment. It? Okay, detoxification. Mm -hmm. Now, the funny thing about raw foods is they detox. Now, the subject of detox is fast. Again, I hate to break it to you, but um, the, uh, as long as you have kidneys and livers, the body has all the detoxification the capacity that it needs. Listen, the things that you put in your uh, body are not going to do anything for you. The liver has a bunch of enzymes, a whole library of enzymes it uses to detox uh, your body. Um, and, and the cells inside your body, they do some degree of this. The, uh, the endoplasmic reticulum uh, does have a bunch of proteins that detox uh, things you don't need anymore. The reason why we don't croak uh, after we drink alcohol is because our liver converts it into less harmful compounds, uh, eventually ethanolic acid. Um, yeah, the reason why we don't immediately die is because our liver does all the detoxing we need. Our kidneys get rid of the weights that we don't need anymore, therefore it detoxes our body. Um, no, and it's not its not like an antidote. You just put it in your blood and it's, it's going to immediately detox. It doesn't work that way at all. Um, so yeah, complete meaningless and complete false. This is a guy who's a con man. I wouldn't be surprised if he's trying to peddle some product at the end. Fascinating. There's three ways to detox. We detox through exercise, mm -hmm. diet, and then if we do a detox, we detox the body. They all break down waste. So anything that's accumulated in the body mm -hmm. can be broken down and removed because that's what the body is trying to do. Mm -hmm. uh, by waste, uh, uh, first of all, meaningless. Uh, second of all, uh, your body excretes waste through the, either the urinary system or pooping it out. Uh, but all... Uh, uh, ultimately, it ends up in your urinary system, all the things that you don't need anymore. That's why we have drug screens that can detect uh, drugs in urine, um, because that's where it gets rid of all the, the nasty stuff. Um, I hate to break it to you uh, again, but drinking this weird green potion is not going to magically detox uh, your body of the lead you just ate yesterday. Um, but yeah, but whatever. That's what the liver is trying to do, the kidneys, the spleen, the lymphatic system. Now imagine your liver. Your liver, the largest internal organ you have, most important organ you have, the linchpin of your immune system. When I say most important... Uh... Uh, no, it is not the linchpin of the immune system. There is no one organ that is the linchpin of anything. Uh, you need every single thing into, um, or most organs to survive. Um, uh, uh, most visceral organs, that is. But uh, to say that it's part of the immune system, it's absolutely false. It's It's not. It's... It may play some indirect role, but it, it really isn't. It's to detox things. Your immune system is to get rid of pathogens and uh, foreign uh, debris within your body to make sure it's tip top. But this guy is again spurting meaningless nonsense that means absolutely nothing and clearly demonstrating his arrogance. Uh, organ. 
I mean, it's the I mean, linchpin of your immune system. Mm -hmm. So like a typist, it can only do so much work in a day. We start giving it three to four times the amount of work it's supposed to do. The liver has to meet and greet everything we come in contact with, break it down, either kick it out of the system, or make it into food. Mm -hmm. There's another option. If it's overwhelmed, it gets stored in the fatty tissue, muscle kit tissue of the entire body, wow. and we become toxic. Mm. Um, there is some truth to that. I just, I hate the way he describes it. Um, lipophilic toxins can get trapped in your adipose tissue. Uh, lipophilic things are much harder to get rid of because, right, our, uh, our urinary tract is, uh, hydrophilic. Um, so it's going to repel all the, uh, the hydrophobic things and it's going to stay in your body. Um, that's why some vitamin, uh, overloads are more harmful than others because they're harder to get rid of. Um, and the same way that sometimes lead can get trapped in your fat and as you burn fat, it gets released into your uh, your body and causes problems. But there really isn't much you can do. Like drinking a smoothie that's uh, filled with all this weird crap or eating raw meat, it's, it's not gonna help you at all. It's, it's either gonna make it worse or do nothing at all. Um, so he's presenting this in absolutely uh, a wrong way. Uh, not everything is converted to fat, first of all. Uh, only the things that, uh, like uh, uh, lipogenesis, for example, like uh, sometimes sugars are converted into fats, but again, um, not much of anything uh, besides sugars. Uh, but anyways, let's uh, continue. And we've seen people, and by the way, we've seen a lot of people who've become a No, they're fat because they're fat. They have fat in their body. The definition of fat isn't, um, isn't uh, oh, okay, my uh, uh, my uh, adipose tissue has a bunch of toxins in it, has a bunch of like ricin or whatever the hell. That's not the definition of, of obese. It's, it's you have a bunch of fat, too much adipose tissue. Uh, uh, yeah, the cells have grown too large and you have too much fat in your body. Uh, this has nothing to do with uh, uh, being poisoned at all, uh, so again, complete bullshit. Will not break down. It's kind of a catch-22. We either feed it right or it'll store what, what we've put in that it couldn't break down, and we just get real bad. I see. Yeah. So... There's eating right, there's exercising. Mm -hmm. So how would one go about detoxing? Well, a lot of ways. You could sit in the sun and sweat. That's a wonderful way. You can use various herbs that have been... Sitting in the sun and sweating isn't really going to get rid of what you have in your body. Um, so again, meaningless. Uh, discovered over the years, thousands... dinner hi honey how no they right. don't do that much until they start detoxing and then it becomes important because we should be eliminating people hold on to your chairs and tables we should be eliminating once per meal eaten few do we put in three no you don't you shouldn't force your body to do things that you uh, don't need to do you should be going when you want to because you will cause problems if you uh, don't listen to your body um yeah, it's, um, this guy is actually not doing too well um, in terms of uh, established fact. Um, he has provided no evidence uh, whatsoever so far, no uh, scientific uh, reasoning at all. Uh, so yeah, uh, complete meaningless what he's spewing right now. Um, I'm surprised uh, this video has been taken down for misinformation, but I digress. Three meals, we get one meal out. We put in three meals, we don't go that day. We get, you know, two days later. Just look at the math. We put in a meal, we put in a meal, we put in a meal. So far we're okay. We put in a fourth meal and the body starts getting irritated, more irritated, and more irritated. And it's really uncomfortable. And finally, boom, oh. Well, it should be one in, one out. One in, just like a dog. Yeah. You should eat and go, eat. Uh, no, that's not accurate. Um, Dogs are very different from humans. Uh, it's pretty inaccurate biologically to be drawing parallels between one organism and another, of which a dog is not an, an absolute one-on-one -on -one, uh, representation of a human. 
And we should realize that before we draw conclusions like lab rats. Uh, we should realize that lab rats are not the same as humans, um, but we can still work with it. But nonetheless, or regardless, um, uh, bad analogy. So, um, and then second of all, you should not be going after each meal. There's n literally no benefit to being doing that. That's only going to put strain on you, uh, give you pain. Um, no, you don't need to be doing this at all. I, I um, don't know what he's trying to say here. It's just adding extra steps to uh, uh, something that's supposed to be autonomous. So, um, yeah. Eat and go, eat and go. Makes sense. And those that follow this kind of an approach have no problems with that. In fact, they're amazed that they're that friendly with their restroom. What people provide evidence and what people, and even if you do, I, I will know it's bull crap because again, you won't provide any, uh, any sort of study or uh, uh, real scientific method uh, uh, approach. Um, or a bathroom, depending on where they happen to be. I see. In fact, the kidneys. Now the kidneys are the master organ of the body. There are... Th um, no, they're not. Um, I have no clue what you're saying. Um, the kidneys uh, are very important, uh, no doubt, but uh, what they do is they excrete waste that your body doesn't need anymore. Uh, they filter out the blood uh, in a very basic way uh, of describing it. They filter out your blood, uh, they uh, regulate uh, minerals and ion balances within your blood to make sure everything is uh, all, all good. Um, yeah, as I don't know why he's saying it's the master organ, which no one organ is. Favorite but pissiest little organs. They're two little organs. Mm -hmm. And they're so important, they uh, filter up to one quarter or hold one quarter of our blood at any one time. Wow. So they're paramount to our survival. Mm -hmm. Now, the thing with the kidneys is they are home bodies. They do not like traveling. They're involved in every bit of fluid you move or, or hold on to in your body. So mucus, okay. saliva, sweat, the mucus in your colon, all of it is dependent on the kidneys, hmm. the pumping of the blood, uh -huh. or the blood, all is dependent on the kidneys. Now, you ever had the experience of being out shopping and you were out all day doing what you're doing or out doing what you're doing, you come home or you're on your way home, you didn't have to go all day, and within two blocks, suddenly two blocks from your house, suddenly, oh, I gotta go. You ever had that experience? Sure. We all have. Sure. Uh, yeah, and we can't get in that door fast enough. What's happened is your kidneys know where you live and they like it there. Mm. And um, this has nothing to do with your kidneys. Uh, sure, you might have an easier time going at home or when you're not moving, um, but that's all a neurological counterpart of your, uh, uh, of your kidneys. It has nothing to do with your kidneys having some sort of neurological capacity uh, um, uh, tantamount to, or paramount to the, uh, the central nervous system. Um, but uh, it has nothing to do with the kidneys. Your kidneys don't automatically know. Uh, that's nothing short of magic, what he's describing. Uh, no, it's all in the brain. You see uh, uh, you see your home. It's a lot easier to like, you know, take a piss at home for some people because it's more comfortable there. That's all neurological. It's nothing to do with your kidneys really uh, directly. They don't have their own uh, brain. It's a safe environment that they're used to. Uh -huh. So when we go on a trip, we leave. And soon the kidneys are wondering, I don't know where I am. It's very strange out here. It doesn't smell right. It doesn't look right. It's, it's just not right. Mm -hmm. Well, what's happening is the kidneys are getting worried because they have to distribute the fluid. But if they don't know where you're at, they don't know if you wandered into a desert. Mm. Again, what he's basically describing is nothing short of magic. Um, this is probably the biggest wad of bullshit I've ever I've heard in my entire life. The kidneys do not know where they are. Um, um, your brain does, uh, and your consciousness, your conscience knows where you are, but it really doesn't have much effect on, uh, your kidneys, uh, uh, salt balance and your ions and whatever the hell, uh, it's, it's, it's going to function the same. I mean, sure. If you're in the desert, um, you can't consciously change your levels of, uh, vasopressin, which, uh, reduces the amount of, uh, uh, a pee you produce. Uh, no, it's, it's going to be, uh, your hydration status, uh, but no, you can't consciously control them, and your kidneys do not have a mind of their own. Um, so yeah, um, you can't really consciously control your kidneys' uh, function, so bullcrap. I don't know where I am. This is terrible. 
They don't know what you need. start tightening up, huh? They don't know what you need. No, they don't know what's going on. So we're on a plane at 8,000 feet of elevation, and they're not used to being that hot. No. Mm -mm. No, it's, it's or worse, 25,000 feet. It's bad. So we end up getting to our hotel room, and by that time, the colon down below is wondering, well, what are you going to do about it? Uh, you're not going to go. I'm not going to go. I don't know where I am. <laughs> well, I'm not going either. And wow. soon we have constipation. Wow. We wake up, we look in the mirror, and we see the Pillsbury Doughboy girl looking back at us. It was swollen, like some sort of prune. Mm, no, this, this doesn't make any sense. I mean, maybe height has something to do, or altitude rather, has something to do with uh, uh, your uh, excretory system. But the way he's describing it is childish, uh, not true, and um, infactual. Not factual at all. Um, no, you don't your colon does not get constipated because of that uh, it's going to be secondary to something else so again meaningless and it took on a lot of water or something it's horrible that's terrible uh, yeah and we blame it on the bed it's got to be that bed man well now we know yeah water um, is vital i've heard this we have to have water i agree and the yeah that's horse okay mm -hmm. well we're just about out of time I that. is there anything you'd like to say that you think should be included for the viewers that you would really want to know yeah, I and wouldn't take any ounce body, of advice. Uh, doesn't need so many ounces of water per w pound of weight you have. Yeah. The amount of water you utilize per day is based on three factors: environment, diet, and activity. If you're very active or in a warm environment, you're going to need more water. Think in terms of at least eighty to one hundred and twenty. Everybody knows this. Ounces of water a day. All right. And then how would they find out more information? Oh, just go to my website, rogerbazanas.com. I will be going to that website, and I will be absolutely wiping the floor with you uh, and debunking every single bit of pseudoscience you spurt from your little gullet. Um, and you can find out anything you want to find out about it. It's all there, and if it's not there, I'll put it there. Excellent. Well, thank you very much, Roger. Thank you. And thank you for watching. Again, this is Arventura TV, Nicole Pyle, signing out. Alright, well that was pretty much it. Uh, obviously this guy is really dangerous, um, not directly, but uh, the, the information he's spreading is 100% um, is, is pseudoscience. Uh, don't believe what this guy says, and I really do feel bad for people who believe these kinds of uh, claims, because um, they can actually get you uh, hurt and sick. Um, uh, uh, also another thing, uh, he really didn't get anywhere with his point, he just went off on a tangent about how your kidneys are conscious somehow, and how smoothies are bad because they destroy enzymes and neutralize it, which by the way is meaningless. You really don't need enzymes, you don't use them at all from other uh, exogenous sources, they're all endogenous, you create your own uh, enzymes. You will have all the materials you need to create enzymes that you need unless there's something wrong with you, and uh, raw food is certainly not going to help you with that. Um, yeah, he didn't get anywhere. Uh, bad debater, uh, well, not bad debater, but bad argue, uh, a bad argument, um, false uh, in every single way, almost. Uh, he does have some kernels of truth, but again, that's only to sway the audience, and I'm pretty sure he's selling some kind of uh, product that's uh, outrageously overpriced. Um, and I really do uh, don't like the way this uh, this interviewer has handled the situation, unless, of course, she's part of the the um, the R Venture TV cast. Um, so yeah, it's it's it, it sounds like an echo chamber to me. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. This guy is a major con man, major douchebag, um, and uh, can actually get people hurt. Um, uh, I may be uh, I'm sorry for being a little bit harsh, but this guy. Um, is the, the prime example of why you shouldn't trust uh, um, pseudoscience or the alt health industry in general because it can definitely get you hurt uh, or get you infected with something that is uh, going to end your life. Um, so yeah, that was pretty much it. Um, I appreciate you uh, listening to me go off on a tangent or uh, uh, reapping about some guy on TV for 30 minutes. But uh, yeah, uh, thank you guys and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.